Hello, welcome again to Cheney Church. You're all most welcome, whether you are watching and hearing us from Chaley in the church building or the village or even further afield. One good thing that has come out of lockdown is that more people are hearing more services. So some I know have heard our service in Australia, in the hills of Romania, in USA, in Sweden and Cyprus, as well as Croydon and Shoreham. I am so pleased that our messages are reaching a wider audience. This week we have, we are on our fourth I Am of Jesus' seven I Ams. I am the Good Shepherd. Did you know that the word shepherd or shepherds is mentioned 331 times in the Bible and that over 500 times sheep are mentioned? The Bible mostly talks about the Good Shepherd with a few bad shepherds thrown in, particularly in Ezekiel. This week we are very thankful for Steve Hagger from Lind Lindfield for being our speaker. But before we hear Steve speak, let us come to prayer. Dear Lord and Shepherd of our souls, we thank you for your care and love, that you are willing to lay down your life for your sheep. We think of the cross and all that you went through. And as a good shepherd, we know that you were caring for your sheep even on the cross, that you cared for your mother and your disciple as you looked after them and asked that they would look after each other that you cared for those who were persecuting you, that you asked your father that they were, you would forgive them, that they, he would forgive them, for they knew not what they did. Lord, your love and compassion was so great that even the pain and the sorrow and the rejection didn't detect or detract from your desire to shepherd us and your people. Lord, we thank you that even now you are our great shepherd of the sheep and that you look after us and you lead us into fine pastures. Dear Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that you gave all this all up for us and that you are the good shepherd. Amen. Oh Lord, may your concern may your concern and sovereign love be seen in the in the care and concern of all those affected by the pandemic. Whether it's, whether it's those who've had it or families that are grieving for their loss. May you come alongside them and comfort them. O oh, merciful Lord, also will you undertake for all those who are suffering from anxiety and are worried for their jobs and how they will pay their bills. On all those who have indeed lost their jobs, Lord, be with our government and those in charge. Give them wisdom in dealing with the present difficult times, as well as giving them a clear plan to help us to recover when the pandemic recedes. Help us, Lord, also to be good, honest and responsible citizens, especially as servants of Christ and residents of a heavenly kingdom, that we may also be good citizens of this world also. And Lord, we would like to praise your name for the memory of Mavis Heyman, who died and is no longer suffering, but is now in your presence. We thank you for her wonderful witness and strong faith <clears throat> and her unique, incredible support for her husband Derek's unique and powerful ministry. Be a comfort and support for Derek and his three children, Carl, Zoe and Kia at this time. Come alongside them and be a comforter and help them to get over their sad loss. But we do rejoice on the many years that we were privileged to know our sister. Be with that family and all those related and help them in their grief. Amen. And finally we'll bring your servant Steve before you now. May you fill him with the Holy Spirit as he opens the word to us now. Amen.
Good morning, Chaley. It's lovely to be with you again, uh, even if I'm not actually with you, actually present there with you. Uh, we have this new interesting way of meeting, don't we? And uh, it's not quite the same, but it's lovely to, to join you on the video anyway. Um, I'm going to start by reading from John chapter 10. Uh, I'm going to read the first 18 verses. So John chapter 10, uh, beginning at verse 1. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will, run, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was saying to them, what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who, who, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man who runs away because he is the, the man runs away because he is the hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Well, I gather you're looking at the moment at the uh, I am phrases of Jesus. And we come now to look at uh, where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Now, we've just read the first 18 verses of John chapter 10. But in those five, five um, words, Jesus says a lot about himself, a lot about who he is, and also about our relationship with him. So, that's what I want to focus on as we look at this passage together. So first of all, then, what can we learn about Jesus? Well, first of all, Jesus is the fulfillment of Old Testament promise. Uh, when Moses came to the end of his time on earth, uh, he said the following prayer. May the Lord, the God who gives breath to all living things, appoint someone over this community to go out and come in before them, one who will leave them out and bring them in. So the Lord's people will not be like a shepherd, like, like a sheep without a shepherd. Now, obviously, 
Joshua is the answer to that prayer. He's the one that leads the people of Israel after Moses. But ultimately, God is the answer to that prayer. He is the shepherd of his people. And we see that idea cropping up quite a lot in the Old Testament. We think of passages like Psalm 23 um, and passages like Isaiah chapter 40, where Isaiah describes um, Isaiah describes the Lord in the following way. He says, uh, he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and carries them close to his heart. To his heart. Or Ezekiel 34 verse 15 uh, says this, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. Now, the idea of sheep would have struck a chord, I think, with the people that were listening to Jesus uh, as he was saying these things. I think they would have related to it well, um, partly because sheep were an important part of life for the, pe the people in those days. Uh, imagining life without sheep was a bit like thinking of um, life today without cars. You know, sheep were an important part of life. But also, I think the people couldn't help but notice that uh, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Or actually, they would have heard it the other way around. The good shepherd, I am, which perhaps emphasizes it even more. Uh, Yahweh is the word that God uh, refer, uses to refer to himself with Moses in, uh, uh, in the burning bush in Exodus 3. So in saying, I am, I am the good shepherd. Jesus claims that he is the God, that, uh, that God of the Old Testament. He is the God promised in Ezekiel 34, 15 that says, I myself will shepherd my will be the shepherd of my sheep. Jesus is the fulfillment of this. He is the God in the he is God in the flesh coming to gather his people and shepherd them for eternity. Now, the life of a shepherd wasn't easy actually in those days. Uh, they led a nomadic existence. They would sleep out on the hillside with their sheep uh, and they would lead them uh, to pasture they would lead them making sure they weren't ever too far away from a source of water and at night they would protect their sheep by building an enclosure uh, to put them in a pen and then they would sleep in the doorway uh, and that would stop the sheep getting out but it also it would protect them from predators as well. They would protect them by being the doorway to the pen from predators. So what we have here is a powerful metaphor of the way that God cares for his sheep, for the way God cares for us. Jesus is the good shepherd uh, who both leads us uh, and protects us. But actually, he's more than that, isn't he? Actually, he's more than that. If we look at verses 7 and 9, we see that he he is the door or the gate. Just like we, we've we been thinking about with the, with the shepherds, with the doorway to the pen. Jesus is the gateway. He is the door. That's what he says in verses 7 and 9. But in this, he, he is making it very clear that he is the way to salvation. Salvation is through him, through the doorway that he is. He is the promised Messiah. He is the long-awaited saviour, uh, promised in the Old Testament. And there are no other doors. Notice there are no other doors. There is not another way to be saved. There are no other ways to salvation. Jesus is that way. So Jesus is the fulfilment of Old Testament promise. What else do we learn? Well, second and perhaps more obviously, uh, Jesus is the shepherd that cares for his sheep. Jesus is the shepherd that cares for his sheep. In this image that Jesus gives us of the good shepherd, 
we see his totally self-sacrificial love for us. Um, the hired hand that he talks about in verse 13 runs at the first sight of danger. Uh, it's not so much that they run because they don't respect the financial worth of the sheep. Um, they would have been too, all too aware of that, actually, I think, because um, they would have incurred, they would have, um, they would have incurred losses. They would have been held responsible for the for the losses of the sheep by by the the person that owned the sheep. So they would have seen that, but they they did not care about the sheep because they didn't own them. They weren't theirs. So they weren't prepared to put their life on the line for those sheep. For the actual shepherd, it was a completely different story. I think perhaps we don't appreciate what life was like for shepherds in those days. Uh, it was a hard life uh, for a shepherd in those days. Um, we know that because um, when David goes out to meet Goliath, um, he talks about bears and wolves fighting off bears and wolves. That was part of the job spec for a shepherd in those days, fighting off bears and wolves. It was a tough job. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that uh, there are no bears and wolves in my job. Uh, in my job's not that dangerous, thankfully. Although I, sometimes I do think that offset's a bit like that. But anyway, um, the shepherd in biblical times had to be prepared to risk their life. They, they put life, uh, they risked their lives uh, for the sake of the sheep. Uh, because the sheep belonged to them. Jesus, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep because they are his because we are his he lays down his life for us but actually um jesus goes further than that doesn't he i don't know whether you notice but he goes further than that we see that in verses 11 verse 15 verse 17 verse 18 he goes further than that because he willingly gives his life it's not that he gives He's willing to give up his life if needs be. He willingly gives, willingly gives his life. He cares so much for you and me that he is willing to give his life for us. That's how much he cares for us. So in this idea of the good shepherd, we're reminded of the, the extent to which Jesus loves us and cares for us and we're reminded that we are his we are his and he knows us that's what it says in verse 14 in verse 14 it says i am the jesus says i am the good shepherd i know my sheep and my sheep know me jesus knows us better than we know ourselves he is what we need. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. Um, he knows the ways, the ways in which we let him down, the ways in which we go away from him. He knows everything about us. And that's what makes it all the more remarkable that he still cares for us. He still loves us and cares for us despite all that. Jesus is the shepherd that knows his sheep and his sheep know him. One of the things I found while I was preparing for this, uh, which I didn't know actually before, is um, that um, in biblical times, sometimes that they would have a communal pen for the sheep. Uh, so maybe several shepherds would get together and they would have a, a communal pen for all the sheep. And then in the morning, the sheep would be separated and the shepherd would just get up and he'd whistle for his sheep, uh, call them by name, and they would follow him out of the pen and he would lead them out. And that's a lovely picture, isn't it? The way Jesus leads us out into the world. We don't go on our own. We follow Jesus. We follow where he leads I think that's comforting, isn't it? It's a really comforting thought that Jesus goes before us and we are led by him. We follow him. 
But it's also a challenge, I think. I think there's challenge in this. And that's the last thing I want us to think about, really, as we look at this passage together. What is our response to Jesus, the Good Shepherd? What is our response to him? Because we need to be like sheep. We need to follow like sheep. Like those sheep in the morning when the shepherd gets up and calls them by name and they follow him out. We need to be like that. Sheep tend to be regarded as less than intelligent animals, don't they? Um, I've got to be a bit careful here because Sarah, my wife, is uh, is a big fan of sheep. She loves sheep and uh, we've got various cuddly sheep all over the house. And uh, anytime we see sheep out and about, she always makes a comment, she loves sheep. So I have to be a little bit careful. But I think sheep do tend to be regarded as fairly unintelligent animals. Um, when I was uh, at school, I did a subject called rural studies and uh, where you had to learn about farming and things really. And it was interesting, but one of the things that's really stuck with me uh, from doing that is, is the fact that I learned how to turn a sheep. Now, that simply means that process that they use with sheep where they sort of pick them up and put them on their rear in that position where they're ready for shearing. I learned to do that in rural studies. I haven't used that skill ever since, but I learned to do that and I feel quite proud that I could do that. I'm not sure I could do it now, but I could give it a go. But the thing about that is the sheep would really struggle and really not would try and get away. But then once you would put them in that position, they were kind of fooled into thinking that they were safe. They would not struggle anymore. They, they were kind of fooled into thinking everything's all right i think we need to be more like sheep though because i think in some ways they do get a bit of a bad press they might be slightly unintelligent animals but at least they do follow the shepherd's voice they have great following abilities and i think we need those following abilities we need to be more like sheep. They follow the shepherd's voice. They don't follow a voice that they don't recognize. They will not follow a voice that they don't recognize. And we need to have those following abilities, I think. It's all too easy for us, I think. We find it all too easy to listen to other voices and follow other voices. We follow our own voice quite often, don't we? And we fall away from Jesus, from following Jesus, because we listen to other voices. Someone once said, the great issue is not believing that Jesus is the good shepherd, but we are weak sheep who need a good shepherd. We are weak sheep who need a good shepherd. Jesus protects us and looks after us, leads us in the right way that is right for us. He knows the way that we're meant to go and we need to follow him. So I suppose the question is, how do we do that? We need to follow him. How do we go about following him? I think it has a lot to do with the amount of time that we spend with Jesus. How well do we actually know our Lord and Saviour? How well do we know Jesus, our Shepherd King? How well do we know him? Um, I've recently read a book by Pete Gregg, and it's called um, How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. I don't know whether I regard myself as normal, but I found it a good read. It was a book that was good for me. Uh, it's a short, fairly short book. It's quite an easy read, but it really helped me, actually. I found it a really helpful book on prayer um, and it helped me to think beyond the 20 minutes, to think more about the beyond the 20 minutes of, of quiet time and prayer time in the morning or whenever you do it, uh, to think more about knowing the presence of God throughout the day. Um, think about praying more throughout the day and being with God and living the day 
with God in that way. Praying continually, uh, as Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5. Spending time with Jesus, really knowing him, is, is just so important. It's so important so that we can hear his voice when he calls. I wonder how much time do you spend seeking his face? How much time do you spend making opportunities to build that relationship with Jesus, to know him more, spending time in his presence, knowing him more so that you can hear his voice when he calls. We need to know more of him. The more we know God, the more we can hear his voice and the more he can lead us. Jesus is the good shepherd and we need to know him and we need to follow him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our shepherd. We thank you that um, you lead us and we pray that you would help us to spend more time with you, to learn to listen to your voice and to hear you and to follow you uh, uh, in the right way, the way that is right for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's been lovely to be with you this morning and uh, uh, I hope you have a good day. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with all and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his Oh,
your